is very important for someone to write and read. Learning read and write it is meaning that uh, opening wisdom of knowledge. Illiteracy is uh, very high in South Sudan. Yeah, you know the war has discouraged a lot of things to be done, so we were really left behind. It will be a better place if people can write, people can find jobs. I don't have language. I want to talk with the people. I need to learn more. In this modern world, somebody should know how to write and read. Not only for himself, for his country first of all, and then for the world. Literacy is, uh, is a very important um, uh, item on the education agenda in this country uh, because um, we have very high illiteracy rates. 82% uh, of women in this country cannot read or write. 76% uh, of men, uh, same, cannot read or write. So it is a big national problem. During the 21 years of war, uh, a lot of children, majority of children, were not going to school. There was no even school to go to. Because all the schools were turned to army barracks, they were bombed down. Education system in general had been destroyed. When the then government of Sudan decided to shut down all the schools in South Sudan because they were considered breeding ground for rebels, therefore our education here was almost non-existent. We are a country of 70 major ethnic groups, each one of which uh, speaks its own language. The main consequence of that short history of literacy in native tongues is that the uh, majority of South Sudanese cannot write their languages, even when they are literate in English or any other language. So you know the language orally, but you don't have it in writing. And the reason was because the government plan was to make sure that the African languages in the South were not developed. They were left completely behind. The people of South Sudan have fought the war physically. And what has remained now is to fight illiteracy. So we are here as a teacher of uh, this uh, mobile school. We do move from a place to another place. We are not stable in one place because we follow the cows. But other people from other cattle camps are, are now asking we teachers to go and work together. In northern Baragazal we have so many cattle camps, over 100 of cattle camps, but now we have only reached uh, eight pastoralist mobile schools only. But he doesn't want to be the move. I did. I did. I did. I did. I Most of the areas in South Sudan, there are some states whereby conflict of the communities continue to, to happen. And mostly it is basically because of lack of education. People fight over cattle. The majority of those who are uh, making a violence now 
majority of them, if not 99 percent of them, are illiterate. Yeah, education can stop violence. So whenever you introduce a, a something which is good to someone who don't know, can stop violence. When you are not keeping at the back of your mind education, then people here, indigenous people, will remain poor because they are not getting the job. They will remain poor. By remaining poor, they will create other alternative means that can lead even to violence. And hungry man is a, a hungry man is a, is huh? is an angry man. Well, literacy helps reduce violence and introduce peace because once you are educated, once you are literate, you know what is good and what is bad. We are now facing tribal tribal wars and uh, uh, some of these uh, uh, insecurities that are brought by lack of education uh, will be answered when everybody can be able to read and write. I think the adult education is a very crucial uh, program for the DDR program because most of the ex-combatant or most of the soldiers that will go through the process will be people that have not had a formal education in South Sudan through the struggle and in order for us to have them participate in the new civilian life in a new country they must be given some kind of basic literacy training our program is the largest program in the whole of the Republic of South Sudan because 150,000 ex-combatants are a lot. And if you have to take care of them, it means that you would have taken care of, in fact, a lot num of number of people because you have, they have families. These people might want to continue with adult education through colleges, through a higher institution, and UNESCO will be providing the basic certificate that the Ministry of Education does accept. The DDR is receiving those who have been wounded from the army and those who have been able, they become elders, they become old in, in their age. So these people, we release them from the army and then they go to, to DDR. One of the issues we fought is to have education for everybody, regardless of your age. And in this case, we wanted to make sure that uh, the, the, the ex-combatant, the military, are trained. In fact, even now, the SPLA is going on with a lot of training inside the SPLA. As you know that uh, Southern Sudanese people are in war for more than 20, 22 years. So almost two generations has got lost the education. We have opened more than 154 centers. It is a transformation by itself. That is how we can transform the SPLA from the guerrilla uh, act to the National Army. Even now, we are open some centers in the wounded heroes areas and we gave them teachers. So now they are in the classes now. Wounded heroes now, those are veterans who are being wounded during the war. Uh, since 1983, when the people started the war, uh, all the people are being marginalized. They did not even have education because in many years they are being in the bush. Like me, I was captured with 13 years. It helps me much because when we didn't know how to write and read, and after this school was opened, and now we can write and read, and we can now able to read the Bible. 
get a job. And without this, I think it will be impossible for us as wounded heroes who are now suffering from the, this war. I'm by name Mary Kate. If I'm not mistaken, I'm being 15. I was looking at people walking to their school. After I see them coming to their school, I also join them. Maybe I say that maybe that one is very good, so I can also follow them and get what is there. According to me, if I'm an educated woman, and then my husband is also educated, both of us should be able to support their family. Our background and our traditions uh, have tied the women down. By then, women uh, or girls were seen as the right hand to their mothers at home in running the chores, in cooking, in bringing water. So the traditions have uh, been ch uh, chuckles for us. Uh, now that all of us have realized that uh, education uh, contributes to empowerment, it's time for us to advocate and campaign and tell everybody girls can still take care of the family, they can still go to school and finish their education, come and work for the services of the community and for the country. My name Mary Adinding. My name is Asiki Isaac Juma Genesis. I'm here as a learner. So the purpose of being a, here is to learn and how to speak and write. For in your future, if you don't study or if you don't go to school, you you will have no future. You will have no children in in generation. Your children will know nothing in generation. I came here to learn because there are so many things that are really disturbing me and as me like this I've, I've been an orphan nobody paying for my five of my school fees I do think of my lost parents so much that made me not to go to school I, I, I do repeat the same the same class because of absent-minded they just let me say a year old independence we are still like a child who is born, still learning how to work. So in the future, what I hope for South Sudan is we will stand by our own and not depending on others. Um, my name is James Riak. I'm, I'm something 17 years old. In fact, I don't know my age, but I'm assuming because at that time we were fighting for the war. So most of children, children of my age, they don't have the birth certificate. This is my, this is my first time to join school. Of course, it means once you learn, then also the world will be wise. And we are really so proud. I am by name Awan Pili Makwash. I am a pastoralist teacher in Fabial Cattle Camp. For me, I need to be a teacher so that I educate my country. The challenge facing us was a uh, distance. So you can move in far distance and you don't know, maybe there's a lot of insecurity. So if, there's, if you found a, a cattle camp, which there's insecurity there because there's uh, always uh, raiding the cattle, that one is also a, a problem. 
My name is Gabriel Tanjol. Ibarat <laughs> Those who are coming, those who came and they are still coming from the north, these are almost uh, the Arabic background pattern and the language of instruction here in the south is English. So you need to introduce intensive English courses so that you need to employ them. Now with the returnees, definitely the number has increased and we already have challenges of classrooms, we have challenges of teachers that we are working on. if international community can intervene to help the government of the Republic of South Sudan in funding education, then other sectors also will move, other sectors will improve. The support we are getting from UNESCO uh, is helping us to develop a strategy for uh, addressing the issue of illiteracy in the country. Well, challenges here we have got because we have got few schools, few trained teachers. We have just come out from war. As you see now, there's too much children here in, the, in this cattle camp. And descent from there to here is very far. So what we are requesting, uh, if there's motorcycle, so that is trouble, from there to Fariak for four hours. As you say, as you see, the majority of uh, people now in the cattle camps, they don't have place for seats. Even when the rain is raining, there is no very quiet place of which if we have exercise books, even the books, even the shocks, we don't have good place for going and put it there. We don't have windows, you know. Windows is very important to us. It protect us in the rain. And also exercise books and also fans. These things, we want them for you because in southern Sudan here, most of the learners cannot be supported by their family. And also, also we want lead train to be, to be made for the learners. So that is why we want lead, lead trainers. Even if the, if the learner have diarrhea, so the learner would not be able to, to escape diarrhea. Nearly one million children have not found places in the, uh, in the schools and, uh, and therefore uh, the ministry has a, a lot to do. So we need, we need support uh, from donors but we also need additional resources from our government as well as uh, the business community, uh, the private sector and the voluntary sector in this country. It is expensive, it is very expensive, but ignorance is even more expensive, so we need to you know, find money to pay for it. Because we need to accelerate the process so that out of school youth and adults are supposed to get literacy, not tomorrow, today. To, to see the future, uh, of South Sudan, uh, it needs a lot of work. Even if you, you educate people and they know how to read and write, uh, they must have a culture of reading. 
You can know how to write and uh, read and write. And if you don't have a culture of reading, uh, you cannot even buy a newspaper. I hope for changes in this country. It will change like other countries, developing, so that also we live peacefully. For future, I need. I want to read, and we see with work and do better in my family will benefit. Well, my dream is that I want Sudan to, Southern Sudan to be very peaceful. I want to be a president. I like to be a pilot, airplane, airplane pilots. I'm hoping to become a professional engineer if God wish and if I finish the course successfully. I need also to become a teacher after that. So the knowledge increase in our country. My dream is that before 2040, we, we would have ensured that all our citizens are literate. Literacy is understanding. Literacy is success. Literacy is opportunity. Literacy is intelligence. Literacy is family. Literacy is hope. Literacy is a power. Strength. Happiness. Discipline. Peace. Dream. Literacy is the future. Bye. Bye.